Testing. Good morning, everyone. Let's start with roll call. Foley? Here. Batra? Kamei? Here. And Mahan? Here. Thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, let's go on to public comment. We have 26 speaker cards for in person. Um, please, so good morning everyone. When you hear your name called, please line up along the steps in front of the podium right here, if you're able, and wait in line until it is your turn to walk down and speak at the podium. You will be given two minutes to speak. The timer is displayed on the podium and please state your name prior to speaking. Thank you. The first three speakers we have is Ace Valentin, Julie Aborni, Elizabeth, or Elizabeth Kamia, Kamia? Hello. you guys could start making your way down, Callie Shulman, and Sarah Abroff. Mm -hmm. yep. When you're ready, the first speaker can come up. Good to go. All right. Can you hear me all? All right, there we go. Hello, my name is Ace Valentine. I work for the Department of Transportation as a parking and traffic control supervisor. I'm a proud member of IFPTE Local 21. Addressing high vac vacancy and turnover rates will require substantial investment in city employees. We do not want San Jose to remain the training grounds for other municipalities. I have many individuals who I directly work with and are critical to my workflow and the essential services of the city who are scheduled to retire. When these individuals leave, there will be a massive loss of institutional knowledge that cannot be readily replaced. Their absence will only place continued pressure on an already stressed workforce. Not investing in labor now will cost the city more in the future. Higher compensation is the only way to make us more competitive with other municipal municipalities and allow us to recruit nationally and help fill the knowledge gap and provide relief to teams that are already stretched far too thin. Mr. Mayor, I say to you and the council members, if you all do not go beyond your best offer in the not so distant future, city services will wither away due to drained human capital and the loss of institutional knowledge. Where I'm from, there's a saying, an ounce of prevention is worth more than a pound of cure. Thank you for your time. Thank you, next speaker. Hello, my name is Julia Borney and I'm a senior librarian in the library and have been, with, uh, have been a city employee for over eight years. I'm a proud member of IFPTE Local 21 and my family and I are residents of District 3. Great staff. I'm very grateful for your passion, dedication and bilingual professionalism. Very helpful assistant. Helpful and friendly librarians. Great customer service. These are just a handful of publicly available reviews from our community members. They were published in the last two and a half weeks. My team has the privilege of monitoring several of our online feedback cues. It helps us address any issues that our library customers may have, but we also get the chance to share positive feedback like this with our hardworking staff. With dedicated colleagues like this, I am humbled and honored to serve this community. My colleagues and I continue to believe that San Jose residents deserve high quality, timely city services. Those reviews from our community members demonstrate how we continue to provide quality services amidst this vacancy crisis. And the work doesn't go away when we have vacant positions. It can often mean that we are doing two to three people's jobs. These conditions are unsustainable and unfair to San Jose residents. You have the power to avert a strike by closing the gap between our proposals. We are looking for an agreement that will restore the city of San Jose as a competitive employer of choice and alleviate the urgent staffing crisis that undermines the delivery of high quality public services to residents. Striking is a last resort. It is something I will be experiencing for the first time if it comes to that, but we are ready for our 
ready to strike for our services. I voted for the strike authorization because I want to support my colleagues and community. I want us to recruit and retain talented, experienced, dedicated, and loyal. Thank you, next speaker. My members can't say better, but thank you for letting us speak this morning. I'm here today to represent um, IFPT Local 21 and the Staff Up San Jose Coalition. We are fighting for better wages so that we can deliver services to residents, uh, which is what they deserve. However, the rhetoric is that we are being unfair, asking for too much. Let's be clear, we're not. We're not asking for too much. We're asking to put food on our table. We're asking to deliver better services to people that deserve them, to vulnerable communities. We're not asking for too much. And the members behind me are going to explain that. Um, and we don't want to, but we're ready to strike. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to call the next five speakers to make their way down. Keith, Lupe Rodarte Velasquez. Uh, it looks like do it pack starts with the D Dan Gibson and Otavio so you guys can make your way down. Thank you okay. Hello, my name is Callie Sloman. I am the assistant city arborist for parks recreation and neighborhood services um, And I am a proud member of IFPTE local 21 um, while I am not a resident of San Jose, um, in part because I currently cannot afford to move here, um, I feel both the residents and visitors of this beautiful city deserve to have safe, clean, and beautiful park spaces to spend time with their families. And with the number of vacancies and huge rate of turnover within park maintenance, it is often very difficult to provide those services. San Jose residents deserve high quality and timely services, as you will hear. And right now we are doing our absolute best to provide those um, amidst the unsustainable and unfair conditions we are currently working in. Um, it is evident that you all care about this city and critical public services that we provide. So it's really time to show us that you care by providing your city workers with fair wages and investing in us. Uh, with this, I'm calling on our elected mayor and our city council members to staff up San Jose. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hello. My name is Sarah Abroff, and I'm a an associate transportation specialist in the DOT and a proud member of IF PTE Local 21. Today, I stand before you 27 weeks pregnant on behalf of all expectant and future parents in our organization to advocate for eight weeks of parental leave. The first few months of an infant's life are critical. Extensive research underscores the significance of a mother's presence with her infant during this important stage. As a union, we've requested just eight weeks of paid parental leave a duration that many of you, being parents yourselves, can likely appreciate as far too little time. I know that you each entered public service because you want the best for the community. Offering the employees of San Jose eight weeks of paid parental leave is a golden opportunity for you to make a meaningful impact in the lives of San Jose families. This policy isn't merely an employee perk. It's an essential support for healthy families. Mothers should not be choosing between adequately tending to our newborns and meeting our family's financial obligations. I urge you to support eight weeks of paid parental leave so we can ensure a better future for San Jose's mothers and children. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Hello, my name is Lupe Rodardi Velasquez. I'm a senior analyst in the employee services team in the environmental services department. I am a proud IFPTE 21 member. I was born and raised in San Jose and I live in District 2 in South San Jose. 
I've, I have also been an employee with the city of San Jose for 16 years. I have been recruiting for over 10 years with the city of San Jose. When I started as a recruiter in the HR department, the city was a training ground, and we were helping new hires get the experience they needed to leave to other public agencies for more pay. When I first started as a recruiter, I remember sitting in the offices of my hiring managers at the regional wastewater facility, listening to these same problems, a common theme that I still hear in my recruitment planning meetings. We are a training ground because we don't pay enough with a look of despair on their faces. Our hiring managers work around the clock doing two jobs in order to do the hiring manager part of their jobs when they should be managing our wastewater facility, our municipal water utility, and our garbage contracts so that we can run a safe and healthy city. Managers can't do their regular duties successfully because they are always working on hiring. We can't keep compromising the safety of our employees and residents. To this day, we are still a training ground, but it's even worse as much of our workforce is retiring and we, we can't retain the knowledge to safely operate this city. We can't even keep recruiters who work in the HR department to stay for very long. We are continuously spinning our wheels training new hires who end up leaving. We are wasting our time and resources hiring and training when we should be using our time and resources to give better quality services to our residents. Our city needs to be able to hire and retain quality employees to do the critical public services. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. I'm gonna call the next five names to come on down. Alex Rojas, Dylan, Claire Gioni, Dee, and David. Thank you. Hi, mayors, um, council members. Thank you for giving us this time to listen to us for my name's Keith. I live in San Jose. I grew up in San Jose, District 4. I went to Book Tree Elementary School, Mobile Middle School, Independence High School. I graduated from um, San Jose State, and I worked in a consulting company for 20 years before I joined the city of San Jose. And then I took my knowledge and my experience, and I joined Public Work CFAS. And why did, why did I do that? Because we want, I want to make San Jose a better place to live for the residents and everybody else because I grew up here. My kids will be growing up here. Um, so we, and I feel a lot of my union brother and sister feel the same way. We want to make San Jose a better place to live and work. As far, for as long as I live here, I know San Jose is the top three city in the Bay Area. And with that being said, the offer the city giving us as the union member is the lowest amount the Bay Area. So I'm not here to ask the city of San Jose to give us the top three offer. I just want to be here to ask San Jose to give us, to negotiate with us for a fair deal that represent the work that we do for San Jose. The, and yeah, with that being said, just the 12% is just not a fair and generous offer as we all know that is the lowest. So thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Good morning, y'all. Dan Gibson, San Jose Public Library IT Department for more than 20 years, uh, fortunately and unfortunately, and unfortunately. Fortunately, because I love my coworkers, I love the people I serve, I believe in the mission of the library. Unfortunately, because I was here for the great layoff, and if I had been laid off, I would have gone to Valley of Water or uh, the County of Santa Clara, places that actually pay good wages, and you know, they basically take care of their employees a lot better than we do here. So. I'm glad that I get to be the first person to use the analogy of the Oakland A's. So the A's are the MLB farm team. And what I mean by that is they get raw talent, they train up that raw talent, and then they trade that talent away and get paid. We don't get paid for the staff we lose. That's a problem. So if we're gonna keep turning over staff by not paying them what they're worth, are my friends, my family, your constituents, they are losing out. 
so we've got to do something about how we're paying our people our come saving them and let's give them the best that we can thanks thank you next speaker good morning my name is Otavio Camara in the city of San and I'm a city of San Jose employee in public works I wanted to thank you all for letting me speak and express our frustration your city departments have been understaffed ever since I've been with the city going on nine years now. We are so exhausted at the end of each day with doing the jobs of two to three people and this yes strike vote shows that. So I ask every citizen to join us in telling the city to staff up and get the vibrancy back in our neighborhoods. Our citizens deserve way better than what we provide. Our parking enforcement, emergency response team, Engineers, inspectors, animal shelter team, plant checkers, and many more are overworked. The complaints and maintenance that we should provide just can't get done in a responsible time frame. It feels at, at times that the city wants to remove us and hire third-party contractors. We all know the quality of the work they provide will degrade the city worse because in reality, they just don't care. I came to the city to get a better work environment along with taking care and doing the right thing for our citizens. And the work my staff and I do every day is unbearable. I have a team of six and each one averages roughly 46 projects, which is way, way too high. We care, but our council can't keep doing this to our staff and citizens of San Jose. At some point, this is going to break. Don't let it happen. Take care of the ones who take care of the city and the citizens of San Jose. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good morning, council members and mayor. My name is Alex Rojas. I'm a senior investigator collector in the finance department, and I've worked for the city for 23 years come September. At 12, I moved from San Francisco to San Jose and lived in, in San Jose for the past 47 years. Currently, I'm a resident of downtown San Jose for 10 plus years. Working for and living in this city has provided me a sense of pride, drive, and duty. The turnover I've seen here is challenging and unsustainable. Please help us retain staff, their institutional knowledge, and their continued commitment to serving this community by providing comparable compensation opportunities other agencies are offering. In the last few years, I've seen many tenured staff with years of institutional knowledge from different departments leave because of better salary opportunities. For example, IT has lost many former employees who followed a manager to the county. A former, assistant, a former finance assistant director moved to a transition agency and recruited other finance department staff. And Santa Clara Water District now employs former finance employees who also follow the manager there for better salary opportunities. I remember starting my career with the city with a department of diverse tenured staff that were one to five years, six to 10, 11 to 20, and 20 plus. The majority of staff I see now are in that one to five year mix, including the majority of finance senior staff with very few in the six to 20 year mix. It's a major burden to have to pick up where staff have left off, train new staff, and bring new managers up to speed. While I, while I enjoy training and developing new staff, I have to wonder if it's effective use of funds to spend so many hours repeatedly training when an increase of salary would Thank you, next speaker. I'm actually gonna call the next five people to make their way down. Austin Carell, Sam Aguirre, Nick Dante, Ryan Smith, and Mary Morse, thank you. I'd also like to remind the speakers to make sure you speak into the mic so we can all get clear audio. Thank you. For a Hello, I'm Dylan Kuhlman Haley. I've worked with the city for eight years now, both in planning, building, and code enforcement, and with the Parks and Recreations Department. In fact, I worked to support you, Councilmember Jimenez, during your very first Christmas event at Southside Community Center back in 2016. I'm asking you and the rest of the city council to support your workers and to support the residents of San Jose. I don't know if you understand how bad it is right now within your city. 
When I was working with the Permit Center, we were directed to stop telling residents that our excessive wait times were due to being temporarily understaffed. Why? Because we had been saying that we were temporarily understaffed for nearly a decade. When you spend years saying that you're temporarily understaffed, at some point you realize that you're lying to the residents. According to the City of San Jose's 2022 annual report, we are the most thinly staffed big city agency in California, with just 6.8 people per 1,000 residents. This chronic staffing crisis is affecting everyone that lives or works in San Jose. This isn't fair to our residents, to the taxpayers, to your constituents, to our community. This cannot be normal. This has never been normal. Please help us serve the community. Please staff up San Jose. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Hi, my name is Claire Sioni, and I am a program manager in Parks, Recreation, and Neighborhood Services, and I live in Council District 6. Addressing high vacancy and turnover rates requires investment and care towards its employees. Short tenures or institutional knowledge and long-term partnerships are critical for ensuring success or hurting every department. I've been in my current role for a year and a half. Prior to starting, my role has not had a consistent person in many, many years. It's been filled with short tenures of people who have left the city and interim staff. A year and a half in, I'm still working to understand the institutional knowledge required to be successful and still working to create trusting partnerships with divisions in my department and people who are used to a revolving door of people in my role. And at times it's difficult and very inefficient. Now, extrapolate that to the citywide level and it's just like band-aids and patch repair everywhere. High vacancies mean many, many people are working beyond their job scope and often they're, like myself, still learning or unaware of policies and institutional knowledge. This is a recipe for burnout and an inability to provide quality services and spaces residents deserve. Not to mention squandering an opportunity to showcase the best public spaces come 2026 when we host the Super Bowl as well as World Cup games. What's frustrating to me as someone who genuinely loves the scope of their role and loves working for the city I rent in is that there is a solution and it's being ignored. Working Partnerships USA shows that the city is capable of affording competitive wages to recruit and retain talent. No one likes feeling undervalued or like they're not worth an investment. And learning more about the gap between what the city can afford to do and what it's actually doing to support its workers is disheartening. I urge the mayor and city council to support city workers in the future of our community. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi, everyone. My name is Dee. I'm a crime and intelligence analyst for the police department. I'm a proud member of MEF. I am here to emphasize why we need to realign our job classification. You may think that all we do is collect crime data and look at numbers, but our extensive analysis lets people know what is going on in our city, and it helps leaders just like you make informed decisions to create a safer environment. In addition, we work tirelessly behind the scenes by investigating criminal activities such as homicide, sexual assaults, arson, robberies, burglaries, and more. As an analyst, we did our research and found that we are not leveled as a professional analyst, nor categorized to be in the city's analyst series. It is unfair and disheartening to discover that we are the lowest paid analyst in the city and the lowest paid crime and intelligence analyst compared to our neighboring cities that hold similar job duties. To name a few, we are behind City of Fremont by 37%, City of Santa Clara by 40%, and City of Mountain View by 53%. Being a crime and intelligence analyst is more than just a job to us. It is a meaningful and rewarding career that helps us find ways to mitigate crime and find justice for victims. We love working for the city, but many of our talented analysts already left for higher pay. It is time to be on the market, and it's time to realign our job classification. These changes will demonstrate that we are valued, and it will encourage us to stay. Please listen to us, empathize with us, invest in us. 
Help us help the community or we will go on strike. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Austin Carroll and I'm a resident of District 5 here in San Jose. I am also a library assistant in the ordering and cataloging unit of the San Jose Public Library. Our small but mighty team works hard to get new library materials onto the shelves at the 25 different library locations throughout the city. My colleagues and I take great pride in serving this community and we believe that San Jose residents deserve timely access to a wide range of library materials in a variety of languages. Unfortunately, due to understaffing, the city continues to fall short in this regard. While the ordering team does an outstanding job at getting the new materials, my fellow, my fellow catalogers and I struggle endlessly to keep up with the sheer volume. At any given time, there are typically between 100 to 175 book carts, about this big. full of materials waiting to be processed. Half of these carts are books, DVDs, and CDs in non-English languages that require manual cataloging and labeling. Because of our unit staffing issues, there are times when these language materials wait in the queue for nearly a year before a cataloger is able to process them. Our, our Spanish, Vietnamese, Chinese, Persian, Korean, Tagalog, Indian, Russian, and many other language-speaking residents deserve better from the city. Council members, if you truly support the diverse community of San Jose like you say you do, then do the right thing. It is time to staff up San Jose. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Hi, good morning everyone. My name is Nick Dante and I'm a transportation planner at the Department of Transportation. Uh, I'm just gonna come out of the gate and talk about parental leave. I'm not, I'm not a parent myself, I know some of you are. And I just want you to ask, is, is four weeks really enough? Eight weeks is a pittance and four weeks is somewhat egregious. So I just invite you to ask yourself that question moving forward. These are the same people that build, design, and maintain, and staff some of our more, most important infrastructure. And this infrastructure was approved and approved by yourself, and we worked with you to, to get it to that point. It's getting incredibly difficult to actually perform these duties, and I'm kind of tired and frustrated of talking to community members and the conversation always ending with, we can't do that or we'll try better next time. It's really frustrating. And I think a lot of that is due to the burnout we uh, experience as staff. Over the last three to five years, I've seen about four employees leave for this reason. They've gone to neighboring jurisdictions for better pay and working conditions and haven't looked back. That doesn't sit well with me and after working with you on various projects, I'm pretty sure it doesn't sit well with you either. So just invite you to Make this decision, um, think critically about it, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hello, my name is Sam McGeary, and I am an associate engineer in the Department of Public Works. I've been, in, I've been with the city of San Jose for over 18 years, and I, and I am a proud member of IFPTE Local 21. Thank you for letting us speak uh, this morning. I work in the engineering service survey section and I represent one of many uh, in this section. I supervise a team of five, which is part of a section team of 20 and seen many staff be trained then leave later elsewhere. We provide services citywide to capital projects for the city's key infrastructure, collecting existing data so that our department partners can build and design roads, pave roads, uh, sewer and storm facilities, parks, boundary surveys, and plant and legal descriptions to know our city streets right away. At the same time, provide construction information and review plans and specifications for design. 
As a city employee, I take pride in serving this community. My colleagues and I believe San Jose residents deserve high quality, timely city services. Uh, we continue to provide quality services amidst these vacancy crises. These conditions are unsustainable and unfair to San Jose residents. I myself work many unpaid free hours because my section is understaffed and overworked, but I have, I have a high ethic value and commitment to produce and serve to my fellow city staff employees and um, the public in giving them good data, not bad data. However, uh, lately that means I get home late to my family and my wife and my three kids, and I miss out on some of their daily activities. And on work from home days, I sometimes stay up to two to three in the morning because some items need to get done to stay ahead of the game because I don't have that help. I am only one associate engineer doing the work of two, as are the survey. Thank you, next speaker. I'm gonna call the next five names to make their way down. Marcel Leith, Nick Rovetto, Riley Knight, Hannah Ornelas, and Linda Shea, thank you. Good morning, Mayor and Honorable, good morning, Honorable Mayor and City Council members. My name is Ryan Smith. I'm an Associate Transportation Specialist with the Department of Transportation. I've been a proud city employee for the last 11 years. I'm a member of um, IFPTE Local 21. I grew up in District 9. I currently live in District 6. I'm very, very, very proud to serve the community where I grew up and where I live. Um, I'm also a new parent of a beautiful baby girl, and as a new parent, and on behalf of all parents in the city, I urge council to please provide us with the eight weeks of paternity, parental leave that we've asked for. The first year of a child's life is very, very special, um, but it's also the most critical year for a child's development. We've got a lot of really talented and dedicated staff at the city um, who spend their time implementing the goals, policies, plans that council and mayor have adopted and given us direction to carry out. Eight weeks of parental leave will show how much all of you value us as city employees, how committed council is to help us employees who are parents raise the future generation of San Jose. Thank you very much. Thank you, next speaker. Good morning, Mayor and City Council. My name is Mary Morse. I'm a Senior Environmental Program Manager with our Environmental Services Department, and it has been my pride and honor to serve the city since last century. I am here today on behalf of my teams and the thousands of other city workers that need your help. I lead three teams. It's 15 hardworking people passionate about serving the community, protecting the environment, and saving the world. Last fiscal year, we had turnover in eight positions, over half of my team. Folks, including an entire team, left. That's years of training and experience leaving because they can't afford to live here, or they got a job with more pay, or less work, or a better work-life balance. This fiscal year alone, last week in fact, we lost two more good people. Our work is regulatory, which means we have to do it. Some of it is contracted out because the city lacks capacity to do it. Last week, one of our contractors told us they're stopping work due to unpaid invoices, which we recently learned were delayed for months because our colleagues in the finance department are so short-staffed and overwhelmed that the work backs up. How are we supposed to work like this? I have colleagues in other parts of the department who are hiring constantly, who can't fill positions, who offer top step and are turned down because those folks can make more money doing less work in a neighboring jurisdiction. We want to work. We want to help our city. We want to serve our city. We are trying our hardest to work, but we are drowning. Public service is a calling, as you know, and it is a passion, and it kills me to see so many dedicated people have that fire snuffed out of them because they are overworked, overwhelmed, and undervalued. Please, we ask you to help us. Help us help you so we can get back to what we are here to do, which is serve our community. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Good afternoon, council. My name is David Parker. I'm a code enforcement inspector with the city of San Jose. I'm also a member of MEF 101, and I'm a district uh, three resident. Council members, this conversation and fight have gone on long enough. For four years in Washington, DC, we saw the unfortunate ramifications of an elected executive who governed by fear, 
lies, intimidation, and frequently scapegoated immigrants, the unhoused, working families, and dog-whistled social issues around our communities of color and victims of substance use disorders. The people of San Jose are smarter than that, and we do not want a de facto dot-com mayor who rules through fiat. As a voter, I am respectfully asking this council to do the right thing and support the contract proposals from MEF 101 and Local 21. The people of San Jose in its wisdom decided years ago to have a council manager form of government. This was an anticipation of a mayor who might be tipsy with power and seeking to do things on his own rather than working with the council. Ten of you have the ability to move this conversation forward and disregard the 11th at-large city council member. You have the ability to approve the off, uh, proposals offered by our members. You have the ability to change the lives of unhoused city workers. You have the ability to impact 800 plus vacancies. While you're evaluating today's testimony, ask yourself, can you have a conversation with a city worker who is sleeping on a bus on a daily basis? Is that a conversation you really want to have with a city worker? And what will you tell them? What is going to be your solution for that member? Additionally, are you willing to go to cons Thank you, next speaker. Nick Rivetto and I've been an employee of the city of San Jose for approximately eight years now. My first six and a half, I was a community service officer with the police department, and for the past year and a half, I've been in code enforcement. When I began as a CSO, there were about 45 of us. I was with the second class, and we were incredibly understaffed and incredibly overworked. I worked hundreds of hours of overtime the first year just to allow the police department to continue functioning with us in the role they intended us to be in. We did so though with the promise that we would be hired or that more would be hired. In 2016, Council Member Davis went as far as to publish an article for the mayor's office praising our program, saying the benefits that it brought to the department and encouraging the city to hire more and more of us. Seven and a half years from my hire date and six classes later, 122 CSOs have been hired by the city, and as of July of this year, only 61 remain. That is a 50% vacancy rate based on the numbers that we have hired. That affects our employee morale, it affects, affects fatigue rate, because we're still being asked to perform the same roles that we previously and always have been. I'm going to flip it now a little bit and talk about my role as a code enforcement inspector. Thankfully, our department has been able to hire aggressively over the past 18 months. We are now almost fully staffed. However, with that being said, more than 50% of the current inspectors in our department have less than two years of experience. Couple that with the fact that on a daily basis, we're notified of any and ongoing active recruitments. I can tell you right now which of our local municipalities are hiring for code enforcement inspectors because it is such a common experience in our office to talk about who has. Thank you, next speaker. Hello. Hello, my name is Marcel Leith and I'm a data analyst in the housing department, a proud member of AFSCME and a resident of District 6. I've worked at the city for the better part of five plus years and I've never regretted it. I want to conduct research and bring those solutions and ideas back to my hometown. My colleagues and I take pride in doing our best to provide the folks of our city the best services we can provide in a timely manner. However, since working here, one thing has been constant, and that's the consistent bleeding of folks for better, job, better paying jobs. At this point, it's a common sentiment to eventually leave because the pay and benefits are better in adjacent cities. Life circumstances happen, folks get married, have kids, and I cannot blame them for leaving to support these events. I just proposed to my girlfriend last month and we're constantly asked when the wedding is. We can hold out for some time, but I fear that I will have to eventually leave a city I take pride in just to support a potential family. I don't have a problem striking if it means that I can get 
To, if I get to keep working on making San Jose the city that I know it can be. I urge the mayor and the San Jose City Council to support city workers and the future of our community by investing in public services. Without city workers, San Jose cannot function. San Jose has the resources to make the city work for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, and before the next speaker starts, I'm gonna call the next names to come up. Huascar Castro, Tony Cruz, Florin Lapustea, and Jose Zacharias, thank you. Hello, my name is Riley Knight. I'm an environmental service specialist in the Environmental Services Department. I'm also a proud member of the MEF Local 101. I'm fortunate to work with amazing people that ensure essential residential garbage and recycling program services are provided regularly and consistently. When residents receive seamless service, it's because my team is doing their jobs to manage vital long-term hauler contracts. Our job class, however, is compensated at 17% below market rate. Um, that's not acceptable. We have had over half of the positions in our division change hands in less than two years. That's over 20 people in a relatively like 40 person division. Um, you know, I have family to support and the strike is gonna hurt them because of my lost wages. Um, but when I'm faced with the reality like many other people here today of not being able to afford to live near where I work, I can't even live in San Jose. Um, I'm willing to sacrifice in order to be seen and heard. We stand united and ready to strike. A 99% yes to strike vote should be a major eye-opener. Um, Mr. Mayor, council members, I strongly encourage you to support the city workers and the future of our community by investing in us. Paying competitive wages and providing quality services to San Jose's residents aren't mutually exclusive. Supporting city workers is supporting city services. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Hello, my name is Hannah Ornelis and I work in the Environmental Services Department as an Environmental Services Specialist. When I was hired 18 months ago, I was the only new staff member on a team of 10 experienced team members. I was so excited for the opportunity to learn from them and gain their program knowledge and historical context that cannot be documented in an SOP. Instead, I learned that my colleagues at other local jurisdictions are paid 17 to 20% more for the same work that I do, and I watched six of those 10 team members leave. Fixing these serious problems of high turnover and vacancy rates is going to require substantial investment in city employees. We need to stop this extreme loss of institutional knowledge. The city is more than capable of affording a competitive wage increase for employees, as shown in the published report by Working Partnerships USA. I am still hopeful that we can avoid a strike, but if our voices are not heard today, I am ready to strike with my coworkers to bring the change we need to provide the best services to our community. Thank you. Thank you, next speaker. Hi, my name's Lyndon Shea, and I'm a supervisor in the Environmental Services Department. I've been here since November of 19, November of 1998, and um, as other people have said, we really do have a revolving door of staff who come, get experience, and go. And in the division I'm in right now, uh, we have three supervisors who report to the deputy, and we've lost five in uh, less than a year and a half. So I'm not sure how you do that kind of math, but that's a lot. Uh, the constant influx of new people hurts morale and hits, hurts productivity across multiple divisions as new people require training in things like budget and finance and purchasing, not to mention the programs and the services that they're supporting, and they need time to come up to speed. So making our pay on par with other agencies would help reduce this turnover, especially when you consider the rising cost of housing. We've had at least one person leave for other geographies. And Mayor Mahan, you said that you're offering as much as other agencies are offering in the way of pay raises, but if we're behind those other agencies, then that doesn't then bring us up to the same rate as what they're getting. Uh, it just keeps us you know, the same amount behind. So it's time to align our pay with other agencies so that we can stop this hemorrhage of staff and, and better serve our community. Thank you. 
Thank you. Next speaker. Hello. Thank you for allowing me to speak. My name is Tony Cruz, and I've worked with the city of San Jose for nearly 26 years, so I've been through it all. I'm a proud member of MAF, and I'm asking for us as employees to be paid a reasonable salary. I live in Tracy, California, and because I cannot afford to live here in San Jose. I'm a senior inspector with Public Works and invest nearly four hours a day to commute to and from work alone. I missed out on spending time with my kids and my family, and even through the pandemic, while most employees were able to use the administrative leave from work um, to, and work from home, I was deemed essential and came in every day to the wastewater facility because management required it. The city has adopted this more with less attitude, whereas individuals are given three or four jobs to take care of on a daily basis and maintain the highest quality of service. We need the help. We need to hire more people. Every day, we as city as San Jose employees are willing to bend over backwards to do the work. The claim is that there is no money for the employees, yet the city is wasting hundreds of thousands of dollars on consultants from engineers, designers, schedules, and inspectors like myself. And these consultants have no vested interest in the city at all. They fix the problems that they create to justify their jobs and then bring in their own people. Yet you say there's no money for the people that need to perform the work. Just stop wasting the money. Please take care of your people and your employees. Thank you. Thank you. We have one more speaker card for Jim Bittner. You can make your way down. If you submitted a card and did not hear your name, I most likely mispronounced it. You can also come down, make your way down. Thank you. Good morning, Mayor Mahan and City Council members. My name is Jose Zacarias. I'm a PCI in the Department of Public Works and a member of IFPT Local 21. I was hired in 1996 as a part-time unbenefited employee. I now have 22 years of full-time service. I've been through the ups and steep downs the city has faced since I was hired. Losing more than 15% of my salary and never getting it back. I was born and raised in San Jose and I'm proud to say that I'm from Eastside San Jose. I had to move to Modesto years ago as I cannot afford to live in my native city. I've seen many city employees come and go. The city is not competitive enough to retain staff. There's no reason for new staff to stay with the city when there are better opportunities around us. The city is willing to hire third party con quote unquote consultants staff at two to three times our wages, yet we cannot, we cannot get fair and competitive wages. There's something terribly wrong with this. I no longer feel any loyalty to the city, yet I stick around as I only have five years to retirement. But I have no issue deferring my retirement and going somewhere where I'm valued, have higher pay and possibly less work. That all depends on your decision. I'm here to support my fellow city staff, do the right thing, staff up San Jose, and make the city competitive once again. You have the ability to right the ship. Thank you for your time. <clears throat> Hello, good morning, city council, mayor. My name is Florin Lapustia. I am the AEA, the Ar engineers and architect president for our local 21 union. Um, but I'm also a senior engineer with the Department of Transportation for the last eight years. Prior to that, I also worked eight years in the private consulting world, so I understand how uh, businesses and, and the environment is when we're talking about working outside of the city. I wanted to come today to let you know that history will be made in one way or another in the next few days. I being, um, I was born in Romania. I came here when I was six years old with my parents. My parents endured communist times in Romania and my relatives as well. But when we look at history, we're gonna look back and we're gonna say what part of the history were we on and the decisions that were made? Did we take part with those who were looking out for the best interests of the city, of the workers that are working hard, working two or three jobs, of looking to and make the city a better place to really uh, get people to stay in the city and not move out. I'm one of the fortunate people who, because of my parents' support, I was able to buy a home in San Jose, but a lot of my coworkers who are my age, 40 and under, are not. And with wages not being better than other cities, 10 or 15% usually less, a lot of my coworkers are thinking about moving away from the city and are saying it's not worth it to work for the city anymore. Let's be on the side of history that says, no, we can't let that happen. 
let's be on the side of history that says we want to help not just our workers but also our residents to have the best services and the best people working for the city as we possibly can. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good morning, Council. My name is Oscar Castro, and I'm the Director of Housing and Transportation Justice at Working Partnerships USA, and I'm here in strong solidarity with thousands of city workers who are going on strike for fair pay and public services. Uh, for additional context, I've also previously worked as a staffer for a city council member, and I've worked extensively with many city workers on a myriad of projects uh, to support and empower um, our community. Um, the city of San Jose is facing a severe recruitment and retention crisis leading to worse service outcomes for residents. The crisis impacts city libraries, the airport, affordable housing, emergency response times, and more. This crisis impacts all of us. I am calling on our elected mayor and city council to staff up San Jose. It is evident San Jose city council members care about critical public services. Show us that you care about the city workers who provide these services by providing fair wages uh, and investing in them. Recently, our organization, Working Partnerships, published a report that shows the city is more than capable of affording competitive wages uh, increases for city employees. Based off of the research of that report, we show that the city of San Jose has a long history of budget surpluses driven by general fund expenditure savings and accurate accounting that could create 13 to $28 million in additional budget savings in the 2023-24 adopted budget to be reinvested into making the city's wages more competitive. The city administration has the power to avert a strike. The staff of San Jose Union Coalition is looking for an agreement that will restore the city of San Jose as a competitive employer of choice and alleviate the urgent staffing crisis that undermines the delivery of high quality public services to residents. They are prepared to strike for public services and I stand in solidarity with them. I urge the mayor and council to support city workers and the future of our community by investing in public services. Without city workers, San Jose cannot function. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker. Mayor and Council, my name is Jim Bittner. I'm a senior engineer for, and I manage school safety for DOT. I've been with the city for nearly 26 years and besides the few handful of people here, that's really a rarity in the city. Per the city manager's quote earlier this year, 60% of employees leave the city within five years. That's a heartbreaking statistic, and I think that really should be something that everyone deeply reflects upon. Why does it matter if people stay more than five years? Because cities cannot be run like tech companies. Residents, schools, businesses all rely on city staff who know the community, know the history of those communities, know the context of the neighborhoods. Without experience, city staff will look ignorant when interacting with our communities. We'd naively propose suggestions that should work per the book, but likely will not fit into that neighborhood. Here's a case in point. I worked several years ago on a road diet project along Lincoln Avenue. This was by far the most politically challenged project that I had ever done in my long career. Reducing the main drag in Willow Glen from four to two lanes and installing bike lanes was either strongly supported or strongly hated. And online petitions reflected that with each site having over 1,500 signatures. But when my director handpicked me to lead this challenge, he did so because he knew that I knew Willow Glen. I knew its neighborhoods. I knew Willow Glen Elementary. I knew the businesses along Lincoln Avenue. I knew the traffic patterns, possible project impacts. And I knew this why. I knew it because I had over 10 years of transportation experience in San Jose. Foreseeing the need to collect comp comprehensive data ensured that this project that aligned with the city's green vision was a success for all who lived around, worked along, and walked, bike, and drove on Lincoln. And inexperienced staff couldn't envision a need for this data, data that helped effectively address the concerns of residents who felt their traffic patterns had adversely. Thank you. Next speaker. Good morning, Mayor and Council. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. My name is David Nurhood, and I'm a 22-year city employee and a proud member of the Local 21 Union. Um, I thought I'd mix it up a little bit, so I put a little poem together this morning. I hope you like it. In March, we began and sat down at the table, crafting a plan to make San Jose stable. 
Retention and vacancy issues be damned. Surely together we can carve out a plan. Then March turned to April and April to May. So little progress. Can we find our way? We have to, we must, we simply can't fail. This ship San Jose must once again sail. Smoothly into the sunset of quality, services for all, when a guarantee that your planner won't be gone by the fall. Then on to June and July with negotiations careening at the next wave of staff, as the next wave of staff announced they were leaving. Impasse declared and now a strike looming, discontent spreading while resentment is blooming. The people deserve better, so let's pull it together and bring institutional knowledge back forever. Let's revisit that table one final time, pull up our sleeves and get the job done. For if we retain great staff, it will be all of you who have won. Let's staff up San Jose, huh? Thank you. Go ahead. Follow, following this public speaker, we're going to move on to the Zoom speakers. Hello, my name is Sarah Castellanos. I work in public works for the city facilities and architectural services division for the last two and a half years. I'm a proud member of Local 21, and I'm a San Jose resident in District 7. As a city employee, I take pride in serving this community. My colleagues and I believe in San Jose's residents deserve high quality, timely services. We continue to provide quality services amidst this vacancy crisis. These conditions are unsustainable and unfair to the San Jose residents. In the past two and a half years that I've been employed, every few months I get an invite celebration for an employee that is leaving to go to an another city uh, or the county. Um, and these are good quality employees and they are leaving because they're getting better wages for doing maybe one job. Um, and after this happens, the people that are left within the division are supposed to inherit these projects they have remaining. So I'm already over scheduled for the next four months and then I'm picking up work from other employees. So I'm doing the job of two to three people and it's not efficient and the city can afford to pay us more. Um, as other members have mentioned, there was a recently a published report by Working Partnerships USA. Um, so we're really hoping to close the gap with negotiations, and striking is our last resort, but it's something we'll do if we need to do. Um, this will be the first time that I will come to a strike if it gets to that point, and I'm hoping that we can negotiate fair wages before it gets to that because the work will just continue to back up. It's not going to be picked up while we're on strike and it's not fair to San Jose residents. Um, so I urge the mayor. Thank you. Julie Jennings followed by ZM. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello, my name is Julie Jennings and I am a recreation superintendent who manages the capital budget for PRNS and I am the camp president. Addressing the high vacancy and turnover rates is going to require substantial investment in city employees. We do not want our brother and sister municipalities to continue to see us as San Jose farm team ripe for the picking. When I joined the city, we were still the number one employer of choice, and that ranking was something to be proud of. However, times were hard, and in fiscal year 2002-2003, PRNS put forward an efficiency savings proposal to increase our vacancy rate by 3%, generating 400,000 in cost savings. It has been done in the past, and can be done again to diminish staff turnover. Our payroll system has the ability to increase the vacancy rate for the four unions. In order to increase the COLA and not to decrease city services. The city administration has the power to avert a strike by closing the gap between our proposals. They just need to want to implement it. 
I urge the mayor and San Jose City Council to support city workers and the future of our community by investing in public services. Thank you very much. ZM followed by Alyssa. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, good morning, Mayor Mahan and City Council. My name is Zita Rebecca Armendoza, and I am a senior crime and intelligence analyst for the city of San Jose, specifically the San Jose Police Department. There may be some instances where you have seen my name on a cover of a five-year analysis that was provided to you by the police department. And I would like to request your kind indulgence to listen to our story. I started my position as a senior crime and intelligence analyst since 2017. And ever since that time, we have hired 15 crime and intelligence analysts. Serving a city of over 1 million citizens, it is a challenge for me to leverage training of staff who consistently end up leaving for better pay at a rate of one to two people per year. I do this while also answering to the needs of the city council, the mayor, the press, and the chief staff regarding crime statistics which help address the needs of the city, whether it be operational, strategic, administrative, and for grant purposes as well. We help our Bureau of Investigations with find suspects and assist in court. We help our Bureau of Field Operations or Patrol to help identify trends and patterns to help reduce and prevent crime. What I need is to be able to train people who, to help with the work who are going to stay in the position because they're being paid, paid appropriately for their work. So from the 15 crime and intelligence analysts, I have lost 10 CIAs. And from those 10, eight of which have left San Jose Police Department for other job offers from other agencies with an immediate 20 to 20,000 to 30,000 pay increase. Alyssa followed by Donna. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. I'm Alyssa Grandal. I work for the police department and I've been here 11 years. I'm ready to strike for what I know is right. So many of us wish we didn't have to strike. It's scary when we're living paycheck to paycheck, but that's how serious and desperate we are for a fair contract. City workers are being overworked. We're losing great talent all the time because people can go to another agency and make 70 to $100,000 more a year to do the exact same job. It's been said that 5% is comparable to other agencies, but our base pay is simply not comparable. Inflation in 2021 was 7%, 2022, 6.2%, 2023, 3.5%. The offered increases won't cover cost of living adjustments that we're seeing. The paid parental leave that this city is currently offering is laughable in today's landscape and honestly just sad for our workers. Both of my pregnancies, I was in the hospital for more than for more than 40 hours. So to only offer 40 hours is crazy. I was young when hired and opted out of short-term disability. So I had to burn all my PTO and sick time. Thankfully, I've been with the city, so I had time saved up, but some of my coworkers are not that lucky. And see, so many of them have had to go into lost time because they're that desperate for more time with their babies. Talk about bad for mental health. And when moms are already facing a likelihood of developing postpartum depression. I have had coworkers work an obscene amount of overtime while pregnant to save time to spend time with their babies. Imagine a nine month pregnant woman working in an evidence room, moving around boxes of marijuana, meth, cocaine, heroin, God forbid fentanyl, working for comp time so that she can spend a few more weeks with her newborn. If that doesn't make you sick to your stomach, I worry about our city. No new mother should have to decide between paying bills and being able to spend time with their newborn. I am hopeful that our council can work with us before we have to strike next week. Thank you very much. Donna, followed by Nadia. Hi, my name is Donna Kattengill. I'm a crime and intelligence analyst at the San Jose Police Department. I have 17 years of experience with the agency and I'm a proud MEF member. I'm a San Jose native who takes pride in both living and working for the city that raised me. That being said, 
A salary comparison com completed this year regarding my job position shows loyalty to this city is being rewarded with a hefty slap in the face when it comes to pay. When compared to surrounding jurisdictions, people doing my same job make a ridiculously higher amount of money compared to what I make. We're not talking about a difference of pennies per hour here. In order to bring my wages up to market value, be at the same level as others doing the same job, there would need to be an increase of 36% in my pay. 36%. I'm making over a third less than others who do the same work. That's how far behind the city of San Jose is in fairly compensating me and my wonderful coworkers who work so hard for this city. Imagine your own paycheck, please, but remove just over a third of what you're normally paid. Would you feel your employer was fairly honoring the years of training, experience, and loyalty you've dedicated to them? I don't think so. And this is occurring in one of the nation's most expensive cities to live in. The citizens of this city deserve high quality community services. To have that, you need to be able to retain high quality, experienced, dedicated employees like me and every other city employee who is here to keep the gears moving for San Jose. I deserve fair compensation for my work. We all do. You can and need to do better. Thank you. Nadia followed by Nara. Nadia. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Good morning. My name is Nadia Naustoyan and I'm a proud member of IFPT Local 21. I have been working for City of San Jose Bureau of Fire Prevention for almost 24 years now, doing plan checks and field inspections. The reason that I'm still there, uh, here is that I love my job, my contribution to the development and the safety of the city. Unfortunately, we go through constant cycles of training new employees that as soon as they pick up on what we teach them, leave for any of the neighboring jurisdiction that pay much better than San Jose. City of Santa Clara, Santa Clara County, Milpita, Sunnyvale, San Francisco, Mountain View, they all pay much better than San Jose. This city has to wake up, rise up and become competitive to be able to recruit and retain the best professional to provide, provide services to the city. San Jose deserves this. The people that live here, work here, invest in San Jose deserve it. Don't you think so? It is in your power to accomplish that, and we hope you will. Thank you. Nara, followed by Abby. Hi, my name is Nara Baker, and I'm an assistant arborist with the Department of Transportation. I'm a proud member of IFPTE Local 21 and a renter in Council District 3. As one of the assistant arborists, I'm excited at this moment to be part of a growing urban forestry program for our city. Almost all of my colleagues are new to working for the city. All but one of us has been here for under four years, and we want to make San Jose the city where we spend our careers but we will not be able to do so without a fair contract. Addressing high vacancy and turnover rates require investing in city employees. We do not want to be forced to leave San Jose for other municipalities because we cannot afford to stay working here. The fact that there are unhoused city workers should be a wake up call. How can the mayor and council say that housing is a campaign priority when city workers are not supported? The only city workers who have potential sustainable futures living and working here have partners who work in the high-tech industry. These truths do not support city values or honor our community. The bottom line is that the city can afford to support its workforce. The city administration has the power right now to avert a strike by closing the gap between our proposals. We need an agreement that will make the city of San Jose a competitive employer and reduce the staffing crisis that undermines the delivery of high quality public services to residents. Every city worker I know is incredibly burnt out. Striking is our last resort. <clears throat> Mayor and council, please support our community and all city workers by investing in public services. City workers are essential to having a healthy and safe community and a thriving tree canopy. 
San Jose is in a great position to support our city workers and the time to do so is now. Thank you. Abby followed by Molly. Hello, my name is Abby Stokes and I'm an associate construction inspector in the Department of Transportation. I'm a proud member of MEF Local 101 and I rent in District 3 here in San Jose. As a city employee, I am proud to be serving this community. My team and I believe San Jose residents deserve high quality, timely city services. And we continue to provide quality services while the city continues to be understaffed. These conditions are unsustainable and unfair to San Jose res residents. During the winter storms this year, my colleagues were working 15 hour days to keep the city streets clear of fallen trees with no overtime pay. To say they are burnt out is an understatement. We all know that the city can afford the competitive rate wage increases for city employees that we are asking for. Striking is a last resort, but if it means that we won't be stretched thin, if it means that we will be able to provide better services to the community, if it means that new parents will actually be able to take meaningful paid time off for bonding, it is worth it and I am ready to strike. Thank you. Molly followed by Melanie. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello, City Council and Mayor. My name is Molly Coleman Haley and I work for the Finance Department for the City of San Jose. I'm a proud member of MEF Local 101. I am urging you to approve the union's contract proposals in order to provide your workers with fair and competitive wages and benefits. I've only worked here for two years and sometimes even that amount of time makes me feel like a seasoned veteran. I work with people in most other departments and I've seen entire divisions of staff lose everyone. The chronic staff turnover means that I'm spending more time training any new people we manage to hire and less time working on improving city processes to better serve our residents. By fighting the union proposals so hard, you are sending a message to both your current hardworking, amazing city workers and any prospective workers that you don't care if they stay or go. Please support the union's proposals and please staff up San Jose. Thank you. Melanie followed by Tiffany. Hi, my name is Melanie Humke, and I am in office staff for San Jose PD, and I am a proud member of MEF 101. My department is responsible for assisting officers in the field, assisting investigating units on crimes, registering sex offenders, processing warrants, processing crime reports, and assisting the public with their requests amongst other responsibilities. I've remained loyal to this city and my job through COVID, short staffing, mandated overtime, and disrespect from the city council. We are so short staffed that I could not even take off a few hours to attend this meeting in person. The mayor has recently been making public statements to try to divide citizens and workers, and I believe that we have enough of that in our world already. Not to mention, many of your workers are your citizens. We deserve a better work-life balance to be able to afford to live and thrive in the city we work in and to be treated with the respect that we deserve for being loyal to this city. We are not asking for too much. In fact, we are asking for too little, and we did that to be fair to the city, another form of loyalty. And I find it sad that most of you don't see that. We struggle to remain employees and citizens of this city, and that is unacceptable. There is so much more that needs to be said. If I felt that you were taking us seriously, but time limits and the fact that I am at work prevents it. City Council, staff up San Jose and do better. Tiffany followed by Cindy. Good morning. Hi, my name is Tiffany No, and I'm a supervisor in the Environmental Services Department and an IFPTE Local 21 union member. I've been with the city for six years, and like many of my colleagues, I've experienced the vacancy crisis firsthand, and I've lost several people on my team to other cities with better pay and benefits. One person was interviewing for a management position in San Jose, but did not even bother completing the full round of interviews after being offered a higher salary and benef better benefits from another city. Others who have left have expressed interest in returning to San Jose, but cannot justify the pay cut. Whenever our group inevitably has another opening, our old colleagues will lament about the low pay compared to nearby jurisdictions. We love the work we do, but the current salaries and benefits provide no incentive for people to stay, 
And as a result, San Jose loses brilliant, highly sought after employees. We are forced to halt aspects of our green stormwater infrastructure program every time someone leaves, making it nearly impossible to grow our program, green the city, promote climate resilience, and improve the environment. I urge the mayor and San Jose City Council to support city workers and the future of our community by investing in public services. Without us, without city workers, San Jose simply cannot function. Thank you. Cindy followed by Melissa. Cindy. Good morning. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Good morning, Mayor and City Council. Hey, Peter. Hey, Omar. My name is Cindy Harlan. I am a 15 year city employee and a very proud member of MEF Local 101. I am MEF Local 101 president and have been involved in four contract negotiations over my years of employment with the city. I must say this year's negotiations by far has been the worst. Not only do we continually fall further and further behind in wages and benefits, but we do not have the ability to recruit and retain talented individual, individuals. And it's simply because we have nothing worthwhile to offer them. We do not have competitive wages, benefits, paid family leave, and the long list goes on. The continued false narratives and rhetoric provided by our mayor, who consistently states the city will have to cut city services to give employees a livable wage. Newsflash, Mayor, city services are already being cut. When you have over 800 plus vacancies, we are not operating at full capacity. Our coalition of unions, EMEA and IFPTE have spoken, and we are prepared to strike for better wages and benefits. Mayor, let me ask you one question. What do you want your legacy, be, legacy to be? A one-term one mayor who brought on the lar largest labor strike in over 40 years, or a mayor who got back to making the city of San Jose the employer of choice. I urge the mayor and council to support city workers by providing a fair and equitable contract. Stop the nonsense and staff up San Jose. Thank you. Melissa followed by Moses. Can you all hear me? Yes. Hi, City Council and Mayor. My name is Melissa Piquel, and I work as an analyst for PRNS, and I'm also a member of MEF Local 101. And as it was recently acknowledged in a San Jose Spotlight op-ed, employees in San Jose do find themselves grappling with significant challenges. We are shouldering the burdens of compensating for staffing shortages, often having to fill in the gaps left by our colleagues. Commuting for hours has become the reality of many city staff, a result of not being able to afford living in the very city we work. Even for those of us who make sacrifices to reside in the city, the housing we can access is far from ideal. The weight of the city's difficulties falls heavily upon us, and yet we're met with discouraging response that there's no viable solution for providing us with fair and competitive compensation. Our leadership has painted us as adversary to the city's residents, disregarding the fact that we too are an essential part of the community. We rightfully demand improved services, better wages, and increased staff. It's widely accepted that our current employment in the city serves as a transitional phase towards more lucrative opportunities. This exodus of talent will persist unless the council and the mayor take heed of our appeals for wages that allow us to live decently and for staffing levels that are sufficient. The quality of city services will inevitably decline unless the city's leadership genuinely considers the voices of the multitude of city employees who have expressed their views through our strike vote. Please compensate us fairly and adequately increase our staffing resources. Thank you. Moses followed by Carlos. Hello, my name is Moses Arroyo. I'm with IFPTE uh, 21, Mayor and City Council. It is time to invest in labor. This council must act in order to keep up services, not for just today, but in the future. A strike is our very last resort. Your staff deserves a living wage. Mr. Mayor, please stop pitting civil servants against the public. Carlos, followed by Janelle. Hello, my name is Carlos Murillo. I'm an engineer at the San Jose Airport. Uh, since 2019, I'm a proud member of IFPTE Local 21. My coworkers and myself take pride in serving this community. The conditions in which we have been providing these services is unfair to us and the residents of San Jose. 
Striking is our last resort, but we are ready to strike. I urge the mayor to stop with the fear mongering and divisive rhetoric and council to support city workers because without us, the city cannot function. The money is there. Please do the right thing for the city workers and San Jose residents. Thank you. Janelle followed by Gordon. Hi, my name is Janelle and I've worked at San Jose airport for the past six years. I love working at the airport and I have a lot of support from coworkers and management, but the city needs some change. During my onboarding, I signed up for long-term disability, the 60 day plan. I went into labor at work six weeks early and my son was born at four pounds. He stayed at Kaiser on breathing tubes and feeding tubes for three long weeks. Standard Insurance did not pay me one dime. Luckily, HR reached out to me and told me that if I didn't hit the 60 day waiting period that I would not be getting paid and I would actually have to pay $700 out of pocket for my benefits or I would have to return to work. Um, fast forward to November of 2021, same exact thing happened with my daughter. I had to use all my vacation sick and your laughable 40 hours of maternity leave that the city offers. Most women are in labor longer than the city provides pay. I had to come back to work with zero balances while my son sat in the hospital with Kawasaki's disease. My social worker actually urged me to talk to city council today to talk about your policies. While I'm done having children, this is something that I'm super passionate about because this is absolutely ridiculous. Eight weeks should be the bare minimum this city should offer since you don't give a state disability. We deserve maternity leave, baby bonding, so city workers could be covered in emergencies. Long-term disability is not maternity leave. Shame on you. Thank you. Gordon. Hi, my name is Gordon Chester. I'm a lifelong District 9 resident, and I've been a city employee for over eight years. This city is being run like a bad business, and I'm gonna explain how. We are in the service industry, much like it does some apps today. For example, an app to engage the community to achieve shared goals with people you agree with. And no service company, either with a vacancy rate of 10%, would expect to run at the best capacity. A CEO of startups would need the con confidence in investors to retain their position. If they tell investors they have to change operations of their product or ask for more money in order to be solvent, it could lead to those the CEOs losing their job or the business going under altogether. Now, elected officials would uh, similarly lose confidence by residents by telling them the city has to change their operations drastically also to be solvent or ask for more tax uh, revenue, more tax dollars also to be solvent which will lead to them not being reelected since uh, tax increases are not politically appealing. Treating residents like investors rather than customers appears like we don't want to invest in workers who provide the services people like me use and provide when the services are what it would increase people wanting to be here in the first place. Investing in people is the path towards prosperity, that which is in our constitution. Invest in us because we're worth it. Invest in our city's future, not with austerity, but with compassion and a vision that people provide services and we want to attract and reward the best people for their hard work. Thank you. Back to the council. Great. Thank you, Tony. Thanks to everybody who shared your perspective today. I definitely appreciate hearing everyone's opinions and experiences directly. Um, and while it may not feel this way to everyone, I do want to assure you that City Council is working very hard to balance the many needs we face as a city and, and do everything we can to make the right trade-offs. Also want to assure folks that our decision, decisions are made by majority vote, not, uh, not unilaterally. So we're going to uh, adjourn into closed session to take up a few agendized items, and we'll see folks for open session at 1.30. Thank you.